It is 10.35 this morning. I, I hope you guys are making it a great day. Remember, we only get one of these, January 10th, 2019, and um, we all have special gifts to give to this world. This is a, a really disturbing and sad story. Um, in Kentucky, a teacher was fired for dragging a nine-year-old student with autism by the arm through the hallways of the school. The teacher is now charged with assault. Well, here in Minnetonka, there's a school dedicated to serving kids with autism and other learning differences. And it's the only K-12 through school in the state. It's called Academy of Whole Learning. The head of the school, Winan Rasmussen, is joining us this morning. Good morning. Good morning. How long has uh, Academy of Whole Learning been open? Well, we opened in 2003, working with students with intellectual disabilities. And then in 2013, we have redefined our mission to work more specifically with kids on the autism spectrum and with related learning differences. Uh, How many students do you serve? 66 are in our school right now. We're K through 12 school. We're growing. We add a classroom usually every year. This year we ended up adding a classroom in the middle of the year (laughs) as well. Oh, wow. So so much interest. How how many students uh, are you prepared to take on? Um, Well, in this building that we're in currently, which we're leasing in Minnetonka, we can have 88 students. But we are actively seeking um, a permanent place for us, which we could, our goal is to have, be able to serve 150 students. So with um, Academy of a Whole Learning, uh, in what ways is the school environment uh, different from maybe a uh, traditional public school? Um, well, in many ways, it's the same. We offer um, you know, classrooms and uh, reading and writing and math and Um, science and social studies and lunch and after-school programs. The way that it's different in that our teachers are all highly trained to work with kids with autism and um, specific learning disabilities. We have only um, an average of eight students in each classroom, and we have two adults in every classroom. One is a highly qualified licensed um, teacher with an autism license in addition to being a special ed teacher. Um, But all of the kids have autism or related learning difference. So I would say that's probably the main difference. So they get each other. They're making friends. They're, um, they're the leaders on our, you know, student council president has autism. Mm-hmm. The, um, the, the kids leading the dramas on the, on the plays on stage, they all have autism. Our state championship flag football team, all the kids have autism. So that's probably the biggest difference is that our kids have autism. Our class sizes are small and our teachers are highly qualified. Yeah, what, what's a, what sort of training do teachers have to go to, to specialize with, with kids with autism? Um, well, our teachers in our lower school are um, special ed teachers, so that's just an additional level of training. In addition, they have their autism license, so, um, so it's, just, it's an extra training, college-based um, training beyond having their special education license. In our upper school, we do have... Um, our English language arts high school teacher is also a special education teacher with our autism license, but our you know math and science and uh, social studies teachers are licensed in their areas, and so we provide training for them through the autism certification center, um, mm-hmm. so that they can be you know, qualified to work with students with autism as well. So how did this? Uh, how did this? get on your heart? How is this something that you decided that, you know what, I need to make a difference. I need to do something here. You know, that's such a great question. Um, I started off myself personally as an occupational therapist, and it just was a field that I went into from the very beginning. Um, So I worked with, um, I was the director of rehab for children's hospitals and clinics in Minneapolis and St. Paul campuses, and I loved that in the clinical setting. But I decided I really wanted to go into teaching, and so I went back to school, got my master's in special education, and um, but I really just loved the leadership. And when I saw an opening for this position back in 2012, I thought, I can combine my hospital leadership skills with my special education skills and and grow this school and serve more kids. So that's what we've done. Oh, that's really awesome. We're speaking with Wyan Rasmussen head of the School of Academy of Whole Learning. This is in Minnetonka, and it's a school dedicated to serving kids with autism and other learning differences. And it's the only K-12 through school in the state. Uh, so we had told, uh, Wyan, we had told about at the beginning about that story from Kentucky where a teacher was fired for dragging a nine-year-old student with autism by the arm through the halls of the school. 
Uh, that teacher is now charged with assault. Um, so if a child with autism has an outburst in class in, in, at Academy of Whole Learning, how do your teachers handle it? <laughs> well, in our classrooms, it's not if, it's, it's when. <laughs> and uh, these outbursts are, you know, autism is a social communication disorder. So an outburst is, is simply a means of communicating. Even when a child yells, no, um, some people might interpret that as the child being defiant, but it might be, I don't understand what you're asking me to do. Um, I'm too tired. I didn't sleep well last night, so I don't want to do it. Um, you've asked me to do too much today already, or maybe the boy sitting next to me has hiccups, and I, it's just too much for me right now. So um, what we would do, what we do every day is um, try to um, – help define what they are actually saying, with what they are actually trying to communicate, and then teach them um, perhaps better ways to communicate it, but they don't get in trouble for having an outburst. Then also, you have to remember that all of our kids have autism or related learning difference here, so all of the kids are very accepting of each other. They've all had their moments when they've had their own outbursts as well. Uh, let's talk about some su- uh, su- success stories uh, from your school. Uh, Sure. Um, we had, um, so I would say parents come here for three main purposes. So one would be they feel like their students are, have more academic potential than they've been able to achieve in whatever setting they're in now or before. Um, or they were bullied. Um, and that can be active bullying or passive bullying where they're just being ignored. Or three, they just simply have no friends because they don't have kids that get them. So my success stories would be along those three lines. We had a student who um, came here, graduated last year from her 12th grade, um, but he came here when he was in eighth grade. And we tested him. His reading was at a second grade level, which is fine. We teach our students at their instructional level. And his mom knew that he was um, probably going on to a life skills program. But we began teaching him second grade reading um, standards and by the end of the year, he was up to uh, sixth grade. And when he started the following year in ninth grade, we were teaching him in the middle of the year. The teacher goes, you know, he is reading at grade level. And um, so we had a meet. I was in that meeting with the parent when we told her, your student is not reading, you know, at second grade level anymore. He's reading high school level material and able mm-hmm. to comprehend it and have conversations about it. And she sat there with tears streaming down her face. Um, he also... Um, was he had to have been the strongest player on our basketball mm. team last year, which, by the way, is also state champion um, for our school in the league that we play in. So he was he has friends. He's a leader. He's doing well in school, and he graduated, and he's gone on to a technical college. So that's to me, that's, that's one of our yeah. an example of a great success story. That's that's amazing. Um, let, what about the stigma? How do you view the stigma surrounding autism? I, it feels like we, we know a lot more today um, and we're more accepting today than, than we were 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago. Um, but, but how do you view it? Where are we today and, and how are we doing? Yeah, well, you know, for me, I'm, I'm immersed in um, working with students with autism. So, you know, we just don't feel a stigma around here. So it is hard for me to answer that clearly, but out in society, I would say we have a volunteer who comes here, a, a man with uh, Asperger's, and he will talk about how different it is now in our school than it has been for him, was for him when he was growing up and how it was hard for him to get a job or how hard it was for him to have anyone to even talk with him or carry on a conversation with him. You know, things are getting better. People are more accepting. Um, I think we just need to understand autism is a social communication disorder. So people are going to communicate differently. And maybe eye contact, frequently eye contact is difficult to make. Um, answering in long sentences for them might be difficult. And then following, like I've been talking for quite some time, a long conversation might be difficult for them to follow. So just knowing some basis, like keeping your sentences short and your story short and Asking for confirmation, did they understand? Uh, that's just all helpful. Um, it's about listening, and it's about having some uh, some patience and trying to understand how this person is is communicating differently. It is exactly. It's about building relationships and not being afraid to build relationships by listening and understanding. Uh, one more for you. 
Um, we're talking to Wynan Rasmussen, head of the school at Academy of Whole Learning. Uh, so this is a, uh, you're describing a great school. Uh, you have 66 mm-hmm. students, um, but there are a lot of kids with autism out there. Can students with autism, can they thrive in traditional schools, um, or, or do they need to go to a, to a specialized school like Academy of Whole Learning? Well, I, I prefer to tell you about the benefits of being at our school um, because we have significant benefits. By having like-minded kids, they accept one another, they like one another. They're, I can, in my office, I can hear the, the, the kids playing in the gym right now together. Um, no one's being left out. And we are able to develop leadership skills. We are also able to um, address those difficulties. So if we do have a, a kid that um, has an outburst or interrupts, um, teacher's talking and all of a sudden the student just wants to say what's on their mind, we can stop the whole class and say, you know, that was not an appropriate social interaction and here's, you could wait, you could write it down, we can give you some strategies. And everybody is learning from that. So those are the, you know, in a traditional public school, you'd not be able to stop the whole class. You'd be calling that student out instead of teaching the whole student body. So that's a challenge in the, um, in the public schools. You know, it probably can be done. It's just easier done in our school. Wyan Rasmussen, the head of school at the Academy of Whole Learning, it's in Minnetonka. It's a school dedicated to serving kids with autism and other learning differences, and it's the only K-12 through school in the state. Thank you so much for sharing your school story this morning. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you for having me. Great. Have a great day. Thank you. You know, I think about it, too. Um, we, are, we are blessed in this state to have such great teachers and such a great educational system. We really are. Uh, and not only elementary schools and middle schools and high schools, um, but but the opportunity to go to to the next level in college. So many great colleges as well. So Minnesota um, has done a, a really nice job, and and we're always like in the top five rankings for states of of education. And uh, uh, thank you to all the teachers out there. Thank you for being, um, you know, uh, inspiring and teaching. Uh, our youth, and um, man, my sister's a teacher. I love the work. Love the work that teachers do. It's a special vocation, and to hear from someone like Ryan, oh, Ryan and, and there's you know schools, similar schools that are, are around the around the state that you know focus on kids with you know maybe specific disabilities or learning issues like autism, and that's that's even a, you know a more special thing to yeah. to dedicate not only to teaching but to you know, take on the, the toughest cases, you know, take on those challenges of kids that learn differently or, you know, struggle, you know, with traditional learning. I mean, that's, you know, it, it's dedication not only just to be a teacher, but to, you know, find different ways to, to, uh, to get to kids and to, you know, you know, attract, you know, attract them to learning, basically. A lot of kids, you know, if, if you have autism or if you have other sort of learning difficulties, if you're in regular school, you know, it, it it can pass you by because you, you you know I think you realize that it's just not for you. You weren't you know the, you you don't you don't subscribe to that you know typical learning process. So you know to have a school like this that can you know gear itself towards you uh, as as a kid as an individual, and that's that's a special thing. And it takes such great uh, uh, patience for any teacher. You know wherever they're at, mm-hmm. uh, elementary school, uh, public schools. I mean. Um, Yeah, so all love to our teachers.